All right, guys, let's talk about mechanics liens real quick. I want to tell you about a situation that happened today, as well as I want to tell you about an extreme situation that happened years ago so you get a full understanding about the way it works. So first off, what is a mechanics lien? A mechanics lien is set up so that if a contractor does work on a property and the homeowner does not pay them, they can file a lien against the property so that the homeowner or the investor, if it's an investor, cannot sell um, in between without taking care of the lien. Um, there's two parts of it, and, and I'll tell you what happened today. So first off, the first thing a contractor would do, and if you're a contractor, you already know this, this is what you would do, is you file what's called a memorandum of mechanics lien. And all that does is cloud title so that the investor, the homeowner, whoever, cannot sell without taking care of that issue first while waiting on a court date. So then there's something called perfecting the mechanics lien, which every state may be different. I believe in, in Virginia, it's 60 days. It might be 90 days. I'm not sure. So in that 60 to 90 day window, whatever it is, they actually have to file their court case. Then the court case, a judge actually makes a ruling as to whether or not you owe the money. And then if in fact he rules that you owe it, it would become a judgment against the property. So the situation that happened today is I'm selling a slow flip and a the slow flip buyer went down to the city and to check title, I guess, which is good on him, right? Make sure we own it. And there was a mechanics lien against it, something that we know nothing about. Um, and, and my first instinct was, well, he's wrong. It can't, you know, it can't be. I've never gotten served any papers. I don't know anything about it. Well, it turns out it was five years ago. I think it was almost five years to the day. It's not a mechanics lien. It's a memorandum of mechanics lien. Um, which obviously never got perfected. They never had court and it's not even filed against me. It must have been the tenant who was in the property had work done who didn't pay somebody. And so this person went and filed a mechanics lien or memorandum of mechanics lien and then never filed for court. And if you don't file for court, it just goes away. It gets dismissed, but it's still on there. You have to go through the work of getting it taken off. Um, and if you if you did go to court, we wouldn't have lost, obviously, because we never hired him. They, they, they filed it against the tenant's name, not even the owner of the property's name, which is foolish, obviously. Um, you should obviously check the owner if you're going to file something. So I wanted to tell you about an extreme situation, which was crazy. And this one goes back years ago, 2013. And I only remember because this is when I stopped rehabbing and building. So 2013, I had a guy that was building. I was building a lot of houses back then, and I got had a guy who was building for me. Well, the last two houses that he did for me, that's when everything started to go bad and I realized I wasn't using him anymore. I played along, he ended up finishing the work. I would go out and inspect, the air conditioner's in, I'd stroke him a check for the air conditioning. Roof's on, I'd stroke him a check for the roof, and so on and so on. Well, about 30 days after the house was complete, I had put an agent on it, had it signs out front, had it marketed for sale. I started having the sheriff show up to my office, serving me with papers for mechanics lien being perfected for going to court. Now, these were from all kinds of tradesmen that I never met, I never hired, I knew nothing about. Well, I actually had to hire an attorney and go to court to defend my position. And it was really horrible. And this is why I say it's extreme, because it was a bad situation that it was bad for everybody, because I'm going against these legit companies, big legit companies who truly did the work and didn't get paid. However, I actually paid. I had my invoices. I paid the guy. I had to bring all my checks and show the proof of everything. So I paid for all the work to be done. The contractor, the GC, did, he was just hiring subs and not paying them. So they all filed against me. We went to court. I had to show everything. And I hated that I was going to court against these guys who legitimately did the work and didn't get paid. But clearly, I wasn't going to pay for it again. It was over $160,000 of work that I paid for that they didn't get paid for. And so in the end, I, you know, I won in court, but I didn't really win. And I'll tell you why. While we were waiting on court, it took six, seven months while we were going through the process, I can't sell the house. So now I have a house, new construction that's on hard money ticking, right? The hard money's ticking every day and I can't sell it because I have court pending and that's what these liens do. They make it so you cannot sell until it's resolved. And so, um, I, yes, I won the cases in court, but it still cost me a lot of money because I had to first off hire the attorney and second off, I couldn't sell until all of the uh, cases were heard, which took some time. So I just wanted to give you a little two minute, uh, um, conversation on mechanics lien. So one is if someone files against you, don't be scared. As long as you obviously didn't screw anybody there, are, you know, anybody can file against anybody. I can go pick a house off the street now and file a mechanics lien against them. Anybody can do it. It means nothing. It only means something after a judge hears it and then rules against you. So just because someone files a memorandum of mechanics lien, it means absolutely nothing. They would actually have to perfect it, go to court and have a judge hear the case and then decide if you actually owe it or not. And number two is, you know, if you get screwed by a contractor, which happens every now and then, and they did, they hired subs, 
you will have to go through the process, but it doesn't mean you lose in the end. And if you are a contractor, you know, again, I, I feel bad for the contractors who are legit guys and legitimately did the work, but had a GC hired them. There's nothing, you know, I understand where you feel like, oh, well, let's hold the house responsible, but the investor, we already paid for the work to be done. We didn't hire you, you know, and so that's the way it, that's the way the ball bounces. And, and, you know, I know that stinks. It was a tough position that we were in at the time. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little uh, two minute conversation on just so you understand how mechanics liens work. Not the end of the world. If you are a contractor, it's a great tool if somebody's not paying you, but you do have to go that extra step and perfect it and have it heard before a judge, then it becomes a real lien against the property. And, and if you did the work, you want, you want to go through with that. Don't just file the memorandum and think that it's done. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.